Okay, now that we've completed our menu categories page, let's take a look at the mockup as to what would happen if the user clicked on one of these uh, menu categories uh, in the menu categories page. Well, what would happen is that they would go to that single category page that would have all the menu items that this category contains. So let's go to the single category page and take a look here. So we have the name of the category up front, maybe some information underneath, and every single item here in that particular category. Notice that the layout here is one menu item followed by another menu item on the same line and then it keeps repeating over and over, which means this is probably going to be a bootstrap grid and we're gonna divide this six in six columns. So it'll divide the width of the browser nicely. Now also notice that we have yet another grid within individual cells. So here you could see that there's you know, about half and half again, but I would say that this is a little smaller, so maybe five and seven. So basically this is gonna be one cell of the grid and this is also gonna be one cell of the grid. This one is probably gonna take about five columns and this one is probably gonna take about seven columns. So we have a grid within the bigger grid that contains six and six columns. Okay, so let's go back to our code editor. Well, let's first actually take a look at our menu categories page. And if we click on this, this will go, as you could see, to single category. And right now we don't have a single category at HTML, which is fine. There's actually something that I noticed right now. It would be nice to give some sort of indication to the user that we're sitting on the menu page already. Right now it just looks like we're, again, kind of in the nowhere land. So the way we could do that is by going to our menu categories page. And I'm right now in menu categories that HTML, which is located in examples a lecture 38 after folder. And I could find my menu item right here. Uh, let's actually make it capital menu uh, right here. And this is that menu item, that navigational menu item. Well, the way to make this stand out is to give it a class of active. And that's a bootstrap class. And I believe we might have actually overwritten this class or at least overwritten some of the properties in this class to match kind of the hover over effect. So let's go back to our browser. It has a nice indication that we're sitting on the menu page and it's the same type of background that we get on hover over of other pages. Okay, so that's good. So let's go back to our code editor and copy the menu categories page because all the pages are gonna be again the same except for the main content. So if we scroll down, let's close up this menu, the images, let's go to the menu categories page and what we'll do is we'll click duplicate and we'll change that to single category, single category. Okay, so now it's a single category. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to clear out all the menu categories related content out of this so we have a clean slate to start with. So we'll probably need to get to main content right here. So we'll go all the way here and find where the main content ends. Right there, that's easy to see. And we'll erase all that. So here's our clean slate that we could start coding. Let's go back to the browser and take a look as to what happens now. If I click on one of the menu categories, it should go to single category that HTML. And sure enough, it does, except of course, there is no content here in the middle. So let's get back to the code editor and start coding up our content. So the first thing we need to do is give our page some sort of a heading. So the way we're gonna do that is by having an H2 and we're gonna give it an ID so we can nicely target it later of menu categories, categories title. Okay, menu categories title and class, we're gonna give it text center. So we want to center this thing and the title is going to be something like lunch menu. And this is something that's probably going to change or definitely going to change from category to category. Now, every single category is going to have some sort of a uh, subsection where we're going to list some kind of message about the particular category. So I don't know what that is, is gonna be for lunch menu, but I do know that I wanna text center it. So I don't know what's gonna be here, but I don't know, maybe something like lunch is not served until after 1 p.m. Okay, so let's say that's what we're gonna say. Let's go back to our browser. So we have the title of the page and it's a secondary title, H2, because the first title is obviously David Chu's China Bistro. And it says lunch is not served until after 1 p.m. That's good enough for me. Okay.
The next thing we need to do is start coding this layout here, which is, you know, about six here and six here. And I would assume that this is the type of layout we want to have up through the medium type of size of the screen. And the second it gets too small, we're probably going to want to stack these one upon the other. So the first thing is to have these things right here inside of a grid. So the way we start a grid is we're going to need a row. Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to code up a section. So we're going to use a section tag. And within the section is going to be our grids, which means the section itself is going to need class equals row. Okay. Now, why didn't I put this in the container? Well, the reason I didn't put this in the container is because it's already sitting inside of a container, which is our main content right there. Okay. So let me cut and paste some code that I prepared from before this lecture to kind of flesh out the grid itself, this grid cell. And it's a little bit involved, so let me uh, go over it uh, in a bit more detail. So first of all, we know that the actual cell, we want the cell to be about half the screen, or not about exactly half the screen. And that's why we're saying column medium screen, medium screen six, which means that the second it gets to small screen, these tiles will start stacking one upon the other. Okay, so that's really all we need for our outer um, kind of a cell, but there's inside kind of a little bit more complicated than that. The inside, we have another row, and the reason we have another row is because we wanted to subdivide the picture. Let's go back, take a look at this, and let me zoom in a little bit. So we wanted to subdivide this picture into one cell and take up about five columns, and the other part where it is going to tell us the name of the dish and maybe some description of it is going to be a little bit bigger, so it's going to take about seven columns. Okay, so let's take a look here. So what we're doing is we're subdividing it. The first thing is we're going to have a row, and inside of that we're going to have a column span of five, and the reason we chose small here is because when the screen is medium or small or large, so small, large, or medium, we want these things to be horizontal to each other. So this cell it should be horizontal to this cell. And if it's smaller than that, meaning if it's extra small, I'm okay with that point to have this cell stack upon this cell. So they're basically going to be positioned one on top of the other one. Okay, so let's take a look at the picture part of this grid. Okay, first of all, we're going to have a div, and we're going to give it a class menu item photo, and this is something we're going to go over in a minute in the CSS. We just give it a class so we could kind of style every single one of them the same way. Number two is, and we'll actually get this D1, this is that number that we want to put onto the actual picture. So let's take a look here. This is the number, and this number comes directly, kind of a number code, comes directly from the restaurant's menu. So we want to make sure to keep that and kind of let it correspond to the menu itself. And the way we're going to position this, if you take a look at the bottom right over here, is very similar to the way we positioned the menu titles and the category titles, is that we're going to make this item a relative, position relative, and then position this absolutely to the bottom right, which should be fairly easy. The next thing is the image itself. Well, the image, we're going to give it a class IMG responsive. That's a bootstrap class that lets it stretch out and contract uh, depending on the size of the screen. And we're going to give it the width of 250 and height of 150 simply because I know that that's the image size that we have. We'll give it an alt, just an item for now, and we'll dynamically fill that in later. Now notice I, that I'm not really using responsive images in the sense that I'm not really substituting this image depending on the screen size. So I could have just made this a background image and then substitute the image depending on the screen size. For the larger screen size, I would give a higher resolution, lower, a little lower, and so on. And the reason I'm not doing this is because it's already a pretty small resolution as it is, and I don't think it's going to be such a big deal to load even on a mobile device over a cellular connection. Okay, so that's our div menu photo div. The next thing we need to do is we need to give it some pricing. And this is something that's not shown here, but this is just simply because we didn't think of it at the time. But we want to give some pricing right underneath here somewhere for this particular item. And that's why the pricing is still sitting inside this grid, this five column grid. Okay, so the pricing is going to be just a div. And we're going to give it a class menu item price. Give it some price. We'll isolate the, the unit 
for that particular price inside of a span so we could basically target this a little bit more specifically and make this smaller so the price will stand out but the unit for the portion is going to be smaller and the same thing uh, second price and again unit for the portion we're gonna uh, isolate into a span okay and that's going to be our picture or picture with some information the second part which is going to span seven columns and again it's going to be small because we want it to stack if it's smaller than small which means extra small so we want these two grids to stack one upon the other and so what we're doing is we using an h3 because it's a yet another subheading even lower down the line and we're giving it a class menu item title and this is something obviously we're going to have to define ourselves and this is the name of that particular dish. It's totally made up. I don't even know if it exists on the menu, but for now, that's really all we need. We have some lorem ipsum in a paragraph right below, again, with the menu item details class that we're going to code up. And that's pretty much how we're going to finish this div right here, the div that spans the seven columns. And then we're finishing the div that spans the entire thing, the entire row. Then we're going to close the div that is the row for those two items within that cell. And then right before we close the div for the entire cell, we're going to put an HR that is only going to be visible using this bootstrap responsive class, visible dash XS, extra small. And the reason we want that here is again, kind of similar to our footer. We did the same type of trick there is that we put an HR just as a visual separator between the menu items, but we only want them when the menu items are going to stack one upon the other. And that's only going to happen at the XS, which is the extra small screen size. So now that the basic HTML is written, we are ready to move on to styling this with CSS. And that's exactly what we're going to do in part two of this lecture.